In this video, we're going to learn how to generate random lottery numbers using C++. So a typical lottery will involve some amount of numbers being drawn from a range of integers from one to some upper bound. So for example, we might draw six numbers from the integers in the range one to 49, where for example, we might draw the numbers five, 11, 21, 31, 45, and 48. And these are six random integers in the range one to 49. We want our program to generate these random integers. Because we want our program to generate random integers, the first thing we'll do is include the C STD lib library that includes the rand function, which allows us to generate random integers. We'll also need to seed the random number generator using the srand function in this library. We'll provide the current time as the seed value. In order to do that, we'll also include the seed time library, which includes a function called time, which allows us to get the current time. Now we'll also define preprocessor constants for the total amount of numbers to be drawn and the max number in the range of numbers to be drawn from. So we'll have here number define total numbers for the total amount of numbers to be drawn. And initially we'll set total numbers to six. And then we'll have number define range max for the maximum number in the range of numbers to be drawn from. And initially we'll set range max to 59. Then down here, the first thing we'll do is seed the random number generator. So here we'll have a call to srand and we provide srand with the seed value as an argument. We need to provide the srand function with a seed value that's going to be different each time our program runs. And that's in order to ensure the program may have a different sequence of random numbers each time it runs. So for example, we could use the current time as a seed value because the current time is going to be different each time the program runs. Now the time function is going to return the current time when it's past the value null. So here we could have time and we could pass it the value null. And the time function is going to return the current time. So technically the time function returns the current time as a value of the type time underscore t, but the srand function expects a value of the type unsigned int as an argument. So here we could have an explicit typecast. We could have unsigned int in brackets to make sure that srand is given a value of the type unsigned int. So ultimately, each lottery number is going to be a random integer in the range one to range max. But lottery numbers are drawn from this range. What that means is that each lottery number needs to be unique. So for example, we couldn't have 21 twice. So we'll need to write our program in such a way that each lottery number is guaranteed to be unique. We'll have an outer loop that's responsible for generating each lottery number. Then we'll also have an inner loop and the inner loop is going to be responsible for making sure that number is unique. So we'll declare an int variable called number that's going to store each random number that our program generates. We'll also declare an array of ints called numbers that's going to store our actual lottery numbers. So we'll make it the size total numbers. Then we'll also declare a bool variable called unique. And unique is going to help us ensure that our numbers are unique. Next, we can create our outer loop. So we'll have here for int i is equal to zero, i is less than total numbers, and i plus plus. So this loop is going to run total numbers amount of times. And i is going to keep track of how many numbers we've generated so far. Next, we'll have the inner loop, which actually creates each lottery number. We'll use a do while loop structure here because we know that we're going to generate the lottery number at least once. And if it's not unique with respect to the previous numbers, then we'll have to generate it again. So we'll have here do and then while not unique because unique being true is going to signify that the lottery number is unique. So, so long as the random number is not unique, this loop is going to continue to run and we'll continue to try to make a random number that is unique. 
So next we'll create the random lottery number. So the rand function is going to return a random integer in the range of zero to some very large positive integer. If we take that integer and apply modulus range max, this is going to give us a random integer in the range zero to range max minus one. And that's because the modulus operator is going to return the remainder of a division operation. So for example, if we had modulus range max and range max was 10, the only possible remainders are zero to nine. If range max is 59, the only possible remainders are zero to 58. So rand modulus range max is going to give us a range of random integers between zero and range max minus one. Now, if we add one to this, it's going to take that range and shift it up by one. And we would then have a range from one to range max. So what we'll do is assign this value to number. We'll have here, number is equal to the result of this expression. Then we'll want to check to see if this number is unique. We'll start off with the assumption that the number is unique. So we'll have here, unique is equal to true. So once this inner loop is done, we'll have verified that the number is unique. At that point, we'll store it into the numbers array. So we'll have here numbers at the index i is equal to number. So in the inner loop, we can check the previous numbers in this array for the number that we've just created. And if it's in there, then it's not unique. So we'll have one more loop to check for this. We'll have here for int j is equal to zero, j is less than i, j plus plus. And we're taking j up until i because i is the number of previous numbers. And then in the for loop, we'll have an if statement. We'll have if the value in the array at the index j is equal to the number that we've just made, then we're going to set unique to false because we found the number in the array of previous numbers. And doing this is going to keep the loop going. The last thing we'll do is output will the number. Down here, we'll have C out and then number, and then we'll output which number it is. So I plus one for the second number, third number, and so on. And then we'll have the number itself. So we'll have colon and then the number followed by an end line. And if we save, compile, and run the program, we see that each time we do, we get six random integers in the range of one to 59, and the integers are unique as well. So this is how we can generate random lottery numbers using C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.